Welcome back, everyone. Toys is here, and I'm back yet again with yet another Super Mario video. And today comes courtesy of my friends over at Jack Specific. We're going to be checking out the entirety of their brand new the Super Mario Brothers movie toy line featuring five inch and seven inch figures. And the packaging is awesome. Cannot wait to see the Super Mario Brothers movie. Of all the things coming out, that's the one. That's the one I want to see. Nintendo and Illumination and Jack Specific has delivered on all the awesome toys. i got to hand it to them. The packaging is exquisite on this. Very simplified, but just perfect. Really pops, really shows off Nintendo, the Mario Brothers, even on the side. It looks very Japanese, import-ish, you know what I mean? Very cool. 16 POA, realistic eyes, premium details, and here's the barcode when you want to go ahead and find him in stores. But what's Mario without his brother Luigi? Of course, the green and the blue guy, and we got him as well. Same exact packaging, very fancy overall. Big window box, shows off his one accessory that he comes with, and on the sides, all that good stuff. I like how the little imagery of the mushrooms, the question mark blocks, star mans are all embedded into the packaging. And here is the barcode for Luigi as well. Next up, in the Mushroom Kingdom, we have Princess Toadstool, a.k.a. Princess Peach, looking all great. The black really mixes with the pink right there, really makes her pop in the packaging, has one accessory as well, and the same sort of deal. Nice photo of the figure, and Peach on one side. She's got a little bit less articulation, around eight, but she's got the realistic eyes, yada yada, barcode, go find her, you know the business by now. And of course, Toad, very cool. Love Toad, love the trailers showing Toad off, right? Very cool so far. I know nothing about the movie, don't want to know nothing about it, but it loves me the toys. That's really where I'm at, and I can't wait to go to Super Nintendo Land. That's going to be great. Nine points of articulation for Toad, and here is the barcode for him as well. But you need an enemy, of course, right? The enemies of all enemies, the final boss, Bowser. And he is the giant seven-inch figure, super premium, ultra details, nicely painted, all that jazz. You get the idea. Very cool, very excited, very, very curious how this fire-breathing effect works. God, I cannot wait to try that. Everything on the box, you just see, it's just very cool. They have a little promo, right? He's got 14 POA and the fire breathing effect. Can't wait to check that out. Here's the barcode for Bowser as well. Now, all of these should be hitting store shelves, hopefully, in and around February 26th. So hopefully you can go and pick them all up because I think you're going to want to. And again, just to kind of talk about the packaging, if you're one of those, you just want to get it, keep these all in the packaging, well, you could do so as well and i think they all look good they all match up they're just very stylized and shout out to jacks i know what you're doing there i see what you're doing the old nintendo entertainment system nes boxes with that black on there i got you wink wink ah, i see what you're doing nice touch i gotta say so sit back relax grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee this is an early look at the brand new the super mario brothers five inch and seven inch figures by jack specific and, of course, here is everything taken out of the packaging. Hey, hold on a second, Nate. That's... There we go. Look at that. Nice touch, right? From the old video games now to the movies. And they look pretty darn good. I got to give it to Jack Specific. I'm beginning to think that's why we didn't see a lot of 4-inch figures last year. You guys were hard at work. I see what you're doing there. Starting off with Toad. Toad's one accessory is a frying pan, and it's in the trailer. And he just kind of whips it out, and he's going to go bash some Bowsers, right? That's pretty cool. Nicely painted black with a brown handle and Toad himself. He's wonderful. I mean, Toad is just so cool. I got to give it to him. And the paint details on these is tremendous. Everything from the bags to the rope to his little cup. You got a little lantern, all the buckles. Everything is painted on this. And it looks fantastic. I gotta give it to him all day. He's even got a little slot right here, as you can see. And you take said frying pan, and it just slides right in there. And he has weapon slash accessory storage. I love that. That is awesome. And everything just looks good. You'll notice the hole right here on the back. 
And it took me for a second. And I was like, okay, wait, what's this for? You flip the frying pan around, right? And you go ahead and you stick it through the back, okay? It's not going to look great, but it really aids in standing Toad because he does not stand well. The backpack is very heavy. As you can see, he kind of leans back. But that frying pan being there now with the handle, if you just kind of move his legs and getting in position, that helps him stand. It's like a little mini tail, right? For so many figures in a way. So that's cool. It's like a third leg. <laughs> they rock that. Very nice. The head articulation is what it is. He just simply goes back and forth. There's not much to it. He's got a big bulbous mushroom head, right? Not a whole heck of a lot going on. Go easy on the arms at first. They were kind of stuck in the shoulders. He's got single jointed elbows, nothing at the wrist, nothing at the waist, and his little feet kick out just like that. I totally dig that. You could say he's got pins in the arms, but they're pinless on the legs, and that just looks good. But he holds the frying pan really well, just like in the trailer when he and Princess Peach are going out, right? Whatever they're doing, it's kind of, you know? So that's awesome. I definitely dig it. The paint is amazing. The articulation is what it is for Toad. It's totally fine for this type of character. He's got his big backpack. They rock that. Very nicely done. And then you have Princess Peach, and she comes with her umbrella slash parasol sort of deal. It's closed up. It has a little heart as the handle, which is pretty cool. And it's nicely painted. It has little elements of pink, a little bit of a darker pink to the white tip right there. And Princess Peach herself. Now, I'm going to tell you in all honesty, she's got the least amount of articulation. She is painted beautifully, so she's got a lot going for her. But the articulation is a little bit lacking, considering all the other figures that have a lot of articulation. Maybe another accessory or two. That would have really kind of evened it out. Her crown is more of a soft plastic. It's very malleable, but again, painted gold. It has all the rubies and the gems and whatever in there, reds and blues. Nice hair, nice sculpted hair, but the articulation, let's say, in the neck is zero, right? Because of her hair, she's got a bit of a waist. The arms will kind of sort of go out to that much. So again, can't stress enough. Very minimal articulation, single jointed elbows. She'll spin at the wrists, nothing at like the bicep and things of that nature. The bottom, she's very hollow, as you can see. She has feet. The feet don't move. So that's why I think an extra accessory or two really would have evened it out. She holds her one accessory nicely, right? Looks good. That is an accessory, like, let's say, for Super Princess Peach. So that's a nice little touch right there. Curious to see if it pops up in the movie somehow. She can hold it on this hand, which also looks great. But again, great paint, great-looking figure. Could have used a few more accessories. Could have used a little bit more articulation. And that's that for Princess Toadstool. And then you have Luigi. Luigi comes with one accessory, which is this big flashlight, which is very cool. It's nicely painted. Has some black elements to it with a red switch. Nicely painted all the way around. Would have been really cool, let's say, if the top part where the light is was like a glow in the dark. Something like that just to kind of add to it would have been nice. And Luigi himself is a great-looking figure. Luigi and Mario are top notch. I'm just gonna, if you want me to save you some time? Sure, there you go. The eyes are great. They're really emphasizing the realistic looking eyes. In a way, it kind of looks like it follows you around the room, right? Which are creepy, but they're cool at the same time. I love the sculpt of the hat, all the little creases and such. It's very much the movie version of Luigi, but in a great way. Still one way that could be just the video game. You know what I mean? They're not going too far out the realm. He's got some nice paint on his shoes. I mean, god dang, he's got great paint. Buttons are painted gold. He's got little gold button accents more towards his legs. The articulation will basically just spin his head. There's not much going on up top, but the arms get a nice range of movement. There's nothing at the bicep, but he does have single jointed elbows, which will spin, and then he will also spin at the wrists as well. Perhaps maybe some extra hands. That would have been interesting, right? More of a punching hand for knocking blocks. Spins at the waist. He's got thigh. He's got single jointed knees, right? That works. And then his feet will kind of sort of rock. There's enough movement in there. It'll spin, kind of go up and down. Not a whole lot, but he does hold his flashlight accessory very well. It just simply goes into his hand and he holds it just like that. So overall, very solid, very happy with Luigi. Nice range of motion, nice movement, nice articulation, nice paint. They nailed it. 
Very cool looking Luigi. And then, of course, the star of the show, the plunger. <laughs> a Mario that comes with a plunger. And that's just perfect. Mario Brothers plumbing. You get it. It's nicely done. Maybe heat it up. Kind of got warped in the packaging a little bit, but not too shabby. And then you got Mario himself. Big, huge, expressive eyes, just like the movie. And one thing I want to point out, these aren't, to me, exactly spot on to the movie. And I kind of dig that. There is a certain old schoolness, Japanese toy kind of quality to these, which I really appreciate because I really feel like that hits all the marks of Nintendo. I mean, even the buttons right there on the side of his overalls. They're painted. The shoes, the laces, the bottom of the feet. No peg holes, though, unfortunately, on these. I would have preferred that just for stands and whatnot and make them look all fancy-like. You can turn the head just like that, just as Luigi's does. Get the arms going all the way out. He's got single-jointed elbows, spins at the wrist, nothing at the bicep. You get the idea. Same exact articulation. He's got the waist. Nothing, let's say, in a swivel at the waist or an ab crunch. But he does have thigh. He's got single-jointed knees. You can get him into that running pose. See, I think that's where if you had some peg holes, you could kind of put him into a stand just to kind of keep him more aloft. You know what I mean? But in that sense, yeah, he really does look great. These aren't just video games. These aren't just movies. These are a nice amalgamation of the two. And they really do make for some cool looking toys. I mean, even just having Mario holding a plunger as he does, that's awesome. Just like in that promo where you call the Super Mario Brothers plumbing, it's got the old fashioned music. They nailed it. And then, of course, this is the one right here. Now, Bowser does come with one accessory. It's this little squeezy bottle. You fill it with water, and I'll show you exactly what it does in just a couple minutes here because you're not gonna wanna miss this. Bowser looks awesome. He's seven inch scale. He's huge, right? He's very nicely painted. He's very nicely detailed. This is a great looking figure from the horns to the red hair. It's the movie-ish Bowser. It's the video games-ish Bowser. It's every Bowser in one. He has some very cool reptilian skin. The plastic feels very cool, very unique. His tail is gummy. You can kind of move it around and whatnot. He's got these big spikes. His shell is soft. I'll show you exactly why in just a second. But overall, yeah, you see all the scales, his big old Hot Topic bracelets and everything else, right? You could get his knees stretched out all the way. He's a little bit pre-posed right here, as you can see. So you want to keep his knees bent because otherwise it's not going to stand. Not in a million years. But he's got some feet articulation, he's got the knees, he's got around the thigh groin area, nothing in the middle, because I think that's where this magic I'm about to show you happens. I don't know how this works. It's totally mind-boggling to me, but just wait. The head doesn't really move, nothing in the jaw. The hands will spin, he's got single-jointed elbows. Those will rock, those will go up in the shoulders. So plenty of articulation for the body type of Bowser, right? So it meets all my needs, it's very cool. Now. What you want to do is you're going to pull the shell off, just like that. It's a big old rubbery piece. It just comes right off. It's very cool. You want to put it on a Mario or something like that, you could totally do that. It's got one hole in there. That's where the spike button goes through to activate this thing. It's so freaking cool. Anyways, you have the on and off switch. Take the battery cover, undo it with a screwdriver, get three brand new batteries. Trust me, I tried it with the old one. Don't do it. Don't even try it. Get three brand new batteries that's the way to do it. You can screw it back in if you want. Make sure that you're going to turn on the on switch. But wait, there's more. Pull this piece off the back of his head right here. This is like the sponge reservoir right here. As you can clearly see, nicely hidden, right? That's awesome. Very well done. You take your little squeezy bottle. And I would say put in anywhere from 8 to 10 drops. Kind of go slow. It doesn't take much. But you'll see as it sort of kind of fills up, you'll know when to stop. It's not going to be a matter of like, did I put enough in? You'll begin to see, yep, that's got just enough water. It's right at the top. Then put that down, get your little top right here, re fix that back into his head, just like that. I just love the way that that looks. It just, it's seamless right there. Switch it on to on. You're going to be in business soon. Grab his big old rubbery shell. Get that back on there. Make sure that button slips right through the hole right there. And uh, yeah, get ready to push this. Just push it. 
This is this is so cool. Push it in, and he literally starts fire breathing smoke. Right, a little light kind of gives that little element of fire. Right, like he's known to do fire breathing effects, and he starts to basically vape. <laughs> for lack of a better term, right? He's kind of like a humidifier, right? Also, in a way. But that is just so unbelievably cool to me. That is an old-fashioned toy, but it's like a revolutionary toy. Like, how many toys can you say you fill with water like that and then it fire breathes in a way? And, I mean, it's a lot of smoke. They're, they're not pulling any punches here. This is hands down. This is like a toy of the year. I'm not even joking you. Even when you turn the lights off, how... Frickin' rad does that look. My God, that is just so sinister, but crazy, and Bowser all in one go. They nailed it. Now, for those of you wondering, well, wait a minute, what's the care for this? Read your instructions, right? You fill with water, then you're going to want to take all the water out of it. So just keep pushing the button till he stops vaping, basically. Make sure there's nothing left. You don't want to get any Bowser mold going in there, but... Like I said, read the instructions if you get caught. I just got to push this button again. I just, look at that. I could do this all day. This is going on my desk for quite some time. I love this friggin' thing. But if you were wondering how does this new movie Bowser scale with the prior release Jack Specific 4-inch video game Mario Toys? And I would honestly tell you, yeah, it totally works. Bowser's size always changes, so it's just a matter of taste. I mean, even looking at the prior release video game Bowser right here, he fits as well, so both of these work, but you might go more towards the movie, well, because of the fire breathing effect, too. But on the flip, if you look at the video game Bowser with the new movie toys, I mean, that works as well. That's like Mario Kart status, right? Bowser got a little bit smaller, so everything really works, I'm going to be honest with you. Even Mario with like a video game Goomba or the video game Super Mushroom, you know what I mean? It just all works together. Even in comparing the prior released video games to now these movie figures, they're a little bit taller, but they still work together. All the different accessories, all the different looks from Toad to Princess Peach and everything in between. There's subtle differences, but I like that they didn't go too crazy in changing the designs. These are every bit the Mario characters we know and love. Now, if you want to look at it in terms of what Jack Specific has released prior from Sonic the Hedgehog to World of Nintendo with Star Fox and Metroid and Legend of Zelda and whatnot, these are definitely going to be bigger figures, yes, of course. And these new figures are going to run you $20 for the 5-inch and Bowser will run around $30. And that's my only concern is that they're well-done figures, don't get me wrong, but I've always liked how Jax has kept it more at the lower price point. So definitely, please continue doing your $12 figures. They're such a blast to collect. It wouldn't be a bad idea to have a collector line, maybe put some more accessories here and there in there. You nailed the paint, but overall, Jax has got a solid Nintendo lineup. It's awesome. And because these are new figures, just so you can kind of get an idea of where they're scaling, here is a bunch of different figures from various companies. So you can see Mario's at the five inch. So yes, he will still be significantly shorter than most brands. So that's going to wrap it up for my look at the brand new, the Super Mario Brothers movies, five and seven inch figures. And I want to say a special thank you and a shout out to Jack Specific for sending these figures out for the purposes of this video. And of course, you've heard my thoughts. Now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Super Mario Brothers movie. Man, oh man, I can't wait to see that. The animation looks great. Let's just hope they nail it. Man, we got some great toys, right? These are awesome, but now we just we need a solid movie so you can go out after the movie and, and grab some Super Mario merch, right? So. I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, grab your Game Boys, get your N64s out, have some fun, play some Nintendo games, and grab some sweet toys while you're at it. When you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.